fucking like innovator you know he's he's like with even with tesla that wasn't his company that wasn't his idea he bought into it right um but people and, and and one thing that i think sums up elon musk he over promises and under delivers constantly he said we're gonna have you know people in mars by 2024 you know that's what is the original statement and then he kept changing oh no it's gonna be this now it's gonna be this podcast is brought to you by BetterHelp Online Therapy, my friends. Get unstuck with BetterHelp. Learn more and save 10% off your first month at betterhelp.com slash genius. That's betterhelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash genius. This podcast is brought to you by ExpressVPN. Protect your online activity today with VPNs. With the VPN rated number one by Business Insider, visit my exclusive link, expressvpn.com slash genius, and you can get an extra three months free on a one-year package that's E-X-P-R-E-S-S-V-P-N dot com slash genius. ExpressVPN dot com slash genius to learn more. This podcast is brought to you by Rocket Money, my friends. Get rid of useless subscriptions with Rocket Money now. Go to rocketmoney.com slash genius. Seriously, it could save you hundreds per year. That's rocketmoney.com slash genius. Cancel your unnecessary subscriptions right now at rocketmoney.com slash genius. In five, four, three, two, one. Hello, everybody. Welcome to another episode of the Genius Brain Podcast. Hey, yo. That's a alhamdulillah, brother. <laughs> alhamdulillah. I, alhamdulillah. I am now a deck. So I, I fucking had my first uh, like grappling wrestling class. Uh-huh. Oh, shit. Fucking love it, dude. Yeah? I want to just smash everybody, <laughs> brother. Everybody. It's hard because my knees are so fucked up. Yeah. But I've been doing a lot of rehab on it. So now, now I can shoot for like singles and doubles. Mm-hmm. I want to just grab somebody… And beat the living <laughs> fuck out of them. Just walk around, just smashing people. Alhamdulillah, brother. Inshallah, brother. <laughs> number one. Number one. Number one. I want to literally grab. If you guys have never wrestled before or ever grappled, it is hard, and it is yeah. so fucking exhausting. And by the way, it's not like I did like a full on course. It was right. Nick. He was kind of giving me an introduction to it. Mm-hmm. And even for like the limited amount of movement that we did, it's, my forearms are sore as shit. Right. Just having to hold and grab somebody for even like three or five minutes is really, really tough. Yeah. So when we found out, or what, not we, but what I found out too is like, you know, in any type of like physical combat sports or martial arts, right? A lot of it's like intuition. The, the difference between grappling and wrestling and between like kickboxing, though a lot of it obviously is like stuff that you do repetition that you can see things in its instincts, Right. It's still visual. There's like yeah. visual cues when you see somebody faint or move. Yeah. When grappling and somebody's on you, you don't see shit. Right. It's you literally feeling everything out where the weight shift is. Yeah. So you have zero knowledge. You don't know what the fuck is happening. That's what's so crazy about it is that like, I think a lot of times when people watch sports, but they've never played any kind of sports in their life, they're like, why aren't you doing this? Why aren't you doing it like… They don't understand just how difficult it fucking is to do what you think is so simple. And then they forget to factor in the fatigue part of it, right? When you're that fucking tired. Throw more. Throw more. It's like, bro, it's only been two minutes. Hey, try sparring for two minutes straight. I guarantee you'll be huffing and fucking puffing at the end of that. There's a lot of things too, like in combat sports, when you talk to pro fighters, there are people who they call them like gym kings. Like in the gym, yeah, untouchable. And the reason why is not because of their conditioning and anything else. Mm-hmm. The pressure isn't mm-hmm. there. Mm-hmm. There's no lights. There's no people screaming. Right. And they're fucking amazing. But when they go in that cage, their adrenaline starts to yep. go. Yep. And they have issues with anxiety. And they're like, dude, if they can get that in control, they would be the next UFC champion. Right. And, and that's another factor to factor in, right? That whole That's like a beast on in and of itself is to be able to perform under the bright lights. Maybe even people booing you, right? Uh, being in like a hostile territory. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's there's so many different factors at play. And that's why you can't help but appreciate guys like Habib, guys like Islam, where they just execute with perfection. And the the way they're able to dominate like that, you, it's just like you know they're about that motherfucking life, that no. Dagestani wrestling, and you know they they're about that fucking life. It's crazy too, because like Nick too, obviously he's allowing me to have like certain positions. I don't know what I'm doing, right? But he was you know giving me examples of what people do when it's a game of like inches. Mm. And next thing you know, like this full 
has me like in a submission. I'm like, I don't even know how you got to this point. Yeah. Like, I don't know how I'm here. Yeah. And I'm in pain. Yeah. Like, <laughs> but he, like, he, I don't know what this move is called. I'm like, fucking, oh, his mom <laughs> down my back. I was like, wait, how did, how did I get here? Yeah. Like, I don't know how this happened. Right. So even for me, you know, watching the UFC and obviously kickboxing for like three years now or whatever, like I could see it's really hard to be a, I want to say legitimate, but to really understand fighting if you've never trained. Um, to a certain extent. Obviously, if you watch it, you have opinions and stuff, and it's probably all correct yeah. to a certain extent, but you understand it more when you start doing things. So one of the things that I've always had trouble with uh, watching UFC fights, 1FC, Bellator, whatever that it is, one, uh, uh, I couldn't truly understand grappling exchanges. Mm. I understand like position here and there, but I, I don't understand what they're trying to do because these advancements and you know them trying to gain position is all small things that we can't see unless we've been in that situation. Yeah. So it's hard sometimes. Yeah. And so even from this one time that, you know, this one lesson that I did, I start to understand things a little differently. I'm like, yeah. oh, that's why that person did that. That's why DC always says go for the single when they're up against the cage. Because mm. I never understood why he's like, I don't understand why people just don't switch from the double to the single when they're on the cage. And it's just about position. And so it like that type of stuff is very interesting. Like being knowledgeable and fighting to watch something, it makes it more fun now. Yeah. Because now we can see, now I understand like when people who are very casual fans and they see grappling exchange, they're booing because they don't know what they're looking right. at. Right. They just think it's boring. Yeah. They think these two guys are trying to butt fuck each other. <laughs> right. Which, hey, that's pretty fun too. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know why you're knocking on it. Yeah. I mean, come on. Speaking of fighting though, yeah. and I'm pretty sure, I mean, this is probably passed for a couple of weeks. But uh, I didn't really want to talk about this only because like, number one, I didn't even watch the fight. Mm. I didn't watch it because I already knew what the result was going to be. Yeah. I, I already knew off jump, not because it's rigged, not because of anything else, but Anderson Silva and Jake Paul fought each other, right? Yeah. Uh, people have been requesting for me to talk about this, but I'll be honest with you straight up. I didn't watch it because I already knew Jake Paul was going to win. Mm -hmm. And the only reason why is because Anderson Silva is 47 fucking years old. Yeah. And I know people are saying, well, he fought, you know, uh, Julio Chavez uh, Jr. Junior. And he won. Julio Chavez Jr., if you guys don't know, has been through a lot of shit. You know, drugs, all this other <laughs> stuff, you know. Um, and at the end of the day, like, knowing Anderson's style, uh, if you watched him, his record, uh, while he was in the UFC, I think he lost eight out of nine in his last run. It was mm -hmm. a skid. Yeah, yeah. It's been it's like pretty, that. Pretty sad close to otherwise epic, you know, career. Yeah, 47 years old. And on top of that, too, I saw the way he looked. This will didn't take any steroids. I was so upset. I, if Anderson took a little juice, yeah. would have been a different story. Yeah, a little different story. I'm yeah. saying trying to trying to be on that Vitor Belfort regimen. <laughs> oh, oh, hey, if he was TRT Vitor style, yeah, it would have been a different fucking yeah. story. Yeah. Um, but from what I've heard, people said that you know Anderson had a lot of great rounds, and a lot of people thought it was uh, Anderson won up until the knockdown. Knockdown. Yeah. Which I heard was pretty fucking clean. Yeah, it was. It was. And and look. For a 47-year-old, he looked like he's in pretty great shape. Just take steroids, bro. Please. <laughs> I beg you, just take a little. <laughs> but but also, too, you could definitely see the age where his reaction was slower. The power just wasn't there, you know? And it's like it, it's frustrating from being an Anderson Silva fan, how he used to move so fluidly and just so effortlessly. You know, knocking people out with just a counter punch like this, right? Just it looks like he barely tapped them, and he's like putting people to the ground, right? Um, but he just he really didn't have the same kind of power behind his punches, yeah. and, and the speed wasn't there either. A hundred percent. Like yeah. if if just even watching him and people were looking at him, you know, doing his mitt work and his pad work. I I did see videos like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the technique looks great. Yeah, but the speed and shit wasn't right. there. And I'm only saying this because one of my favorite videos that I've ever seen from Anderson Silva outside of the UFC was him at Wildcard Boxing with a uh, Freddie Roach, mm -hmm. and he was boxing another pro boxer. And this was ten years ago, and this yeah. is when he was like 38, and he was his footwork, his speed, his timing was amazing. Yeah. And when I saw that pad work, even though it did look amazing, but it looked amazing for his age. Exactly. That's the caveat here. Yeah. But. I will give credit to fucking Jake Paul, man. Absolutely. You guys have to understand something. And I know a lot of people too may disagree with this because they're saying, well, you know, he's fighting uh, washed fighters. A hundred percent true. But the other flip side to this, right, is that a lot of pro boxers, when they first start boxing, they fight a lot of shitty people and not to the caliber of Anderson Silva. Right. Pro boxers, like you've seen it too. So you watched it in a boxing match. Uh, I only saw clips of this, of that uh, the, the guy that… Um, Logan Paul fought it first. KSI. Mm -hmm. KSI fought somebody. He, was, he fought two fights in one night and he fought 
Uh, he fucking phone. He <laughs> fought um, this one Mexican pro boxer, right? Mm-hmm. That boy was trash. He yeah. was pure fucking garbage. It looks like he's oh, never so bad. He looks like he never boxed a day it's in like, his life. How is this guy a professional? Exactly. I, that's what I don't understand. A lot of pro boxers, when you first fight pro boxing, yeah, are fighters like that. And I'm saying this because I've seen it. Right, and the same thing like back, like in amateur uh, MMA fights. Yeah, you, it's a mix up. Sometimes you'll get the phenom. Right. Other times you'll get somebody who's an amateur or pro that looks like they've never fought a day in their life. Or, or it's very intentionally stacked that way to pad your record. A hundred percent. And so the first few fights that Logan fought, it's questionable, right? Mm-hmm. Obviously, somebody like Ben Askren, mm-hmm. fucking neat, doesn't have any hips. One of the worst strikers in the in, in yeah. MMA history, history ever, bro. Right? History, yeah. Literally. Yeah. Who the fuck cares about that? But he fought somebody like Tyron Woodley, who was known to knock out people, obviously on a on a on a, on a fight skit as well. But Anderson Silva is not those people. Yeah, yeah. Right. When you look at somebody who was a beginning as a pro boxer, he him being able to beat Anderson Silva, even though it was questionable for a lot of people. Once again, I didn't see the fight, so I have no opinion. Yeah. It's pretty fucking amazing. Yeah. You know, you could definitely see the improvements in, in Jake uh, Jake's skills as well. And he answered one question that went un- unanswered uh, up until that point was, can he go the distance? Can he last? Can he go a full eight round? I mean, it wasn't obviously a 12 round fight, but like yeah. he, he went the eight rounds and he looked relatively fresh. It didn't look like he was like just gassing out and huffing and puffing. So big props to him for like being in shape continuing to improve himself um, and did enough to to get the dub on this one, man. And, you know, the, it kind of made Dana eat his words because, you know. Like fight Anderson Silva. Yeah, he was like a year or so ago. He's like, I guarantee you Jake will not fucking fight an Anderson Silva. He was like, Jake. And who knows? Maybe you know? Anderson, Anderson Silva too, a year or two years ago, he, he might know, have been better. I know, I know. And at that age, it's so critical. Like yeah. each year is so each critical. Each year is vastly different. Yeah, yeah. So like, you know, Anthony Smith, if you guys don't know who Anthony Smith is, you know, if you guys are not a fight fan, I think this is just an interesting conversation to have anyways. It's like Anthony Smith is also a light heavyweight in a, in the UFC, right? Commentator, great fighter too. Yeah. A lot of fights in the UFC. Yeah. Um, and I think like his bone to pick with Jake Paul is that, okay, so the kid can fight, but he still is a piece of shit to him because he's like, you are specifically picking our beloved legends yeah. who have been on the hugest fight skids of their life. They're yeah. at their way past their prime. These right. people who have legacy that they built, built this company up, who have literally just bared their cross and have fought their heart out. Their best years are now behind them. And then you take them into this platform and you beat them up. Like it's nothing when you're this 27, 26 year old kid who has all the money in the world and you do that to people who are legends and you don't give them their due respect that they deserve. He goes, that's why he has an issue with them. He goes, until you fight somebody who was at your caliber or the caliber that we deem fit for you, then you're still going to be questioned all the time. Which, when he says it like that, it's 100% true. Right, right. Like, I give him his props for Anderson Silva. Yeah. But I, I still don't respect him very much because you decide to take a fight with a quote-unquote legend who, by the way, is fucking damn near 50 years old. Right. He, the man's twice his age. You who's know? had multiple surgeries, destroyed his fucking shin, destroyed his knees. Everything about this guy is torn down. But then the flip side to that is that these are grown ass men making the decisions themselves. Yeah, they like you know? money too. Yeah, exactly. They 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 see it as a payday, and I don't really think they look at it as in terms of like a legacy thing for them. Yeah. They're like their legacy is already set. You know, Anderson going into it because he said it's like this. You know, this is what I expected. Like yeah. he he expected to lose. He didn't expect to win. Right. Um, but. Yeah, that what Anthony Smith is saying is completely valid, but then let's bring in the payday into yeah. the picture, and then it changes the conversation, right? Yeah, I mean, I'm pretty sure Anderson Silva, you know, I think his upfront pay was like 500k, and then he has like a 35 percent of the pay per view. Mm-hmm. So, you know, he's probably walking away close to a million, right? Which is not bad for a right. night's work, right? I mean, not to mention other sponsorships he might have gotten through this. You yeah. Know? So I just hate seeing like somebody who I who is. My favorite fighter in all of mixed martial arts history. Yeah, go down like that. I know, I know. That's that's definitely the sad. I don't care part. to watch it. I don't care to watch this fucking free show. Yeah, and that's why too. I heard like the pay per view vibe. Not maybe the pay per view vibes or like the attendance buys were trash. Mm. Like that's the other thing that I think Jay Paul doesn't realize is that just because you're fighting Anderson Silva doesn't mean that people still want to fight you. People who are who are honestly washed and old, right? Yeah. Because I'm a huge fan of Anderson Silva. 
the his fan Jake Paul's fan base is what twelve years old, ten years old. They don't know who fucking Anderson Silva is. Yeah, they don't really care to watch this. The freak show is now done. We've seen you do this same trope over and over again. Of course, the buys aren't going to be that great because nobody cares to see you beat up old people now. The shock factor is not there anymore. Exactly. That's why I, I didn't watch. I didn't watch the last Tyron Woodley fight. Mm-hmm. I didn't watch this fight either. Yeah. I don't care to. Yeah. The one that I was going to buy was him fighting Tommy Fury. Right, right. See, now that would have been an interesting match, yeah, right? Yeah, not anymore. Tommy Fury's going to get his ass beat. Yeah. Jake, Jake Paul has gotten exponentially better, and Tommy Fury hasn't fought since. Tommy yeah. Fury's going to get it fucked up. Yeah. I feel anyways. Yeah, yeah. No, I mean, like I said, you could definitely see the improvement and in, in strides in, in Jake Paul's game for sure. But again, the knock there is still valid, which is that he hasn't fought anybody. I mean, has he fought a professional boxer yet? No, no. right? Yeah, so he hasn't, one, fought a professional boxer yet. And two, he hasn't fought a professional boxer worth their salt, you know, like that that actually can compete with him. At the same age, that's not yeah. 50 years old, that's right. not on a crazy fight. Like Anderson Silva, like I said, I love him, but time gets everybody. Yeah, man. It doesn't matter. Yeah. Like, for example, if you guys don't know who Sugar Ray Leonard is, boxing fucking legend. Yeah. Right? And look, he's like 60 years old almost. Uh, are, you, are, are you going to reference that clip with Ryan Garcia? Yes. <laughs> that was so sad to watch. And that was so Let me tell you sad something. to watch. Fucking Sugar Ray Leonard is one of my favorite boxers of all time. He's a legend. legend. Rightfully so. He's a fucking legend. Dog, his hands were like lightning. I know, man. And then you see him do the uppercut challenge oh, with Ryan Garcia. Bro. And it's fast for his age. Yeah. But it watching looked, that shit was- It looked like he was moving hands underwater, man. Bro, that shit made me giggle a little bit. <laughs> It made me giggle. It did. And I don't want to see that shit. I did it. You know what I'm saying? Time gets everybody. Yeah. That's just a factor. Yeah. It is what it is, man. So like for, for somebody like Jake Paul, his next move and the next fight that he has is going to be a smaller buy unless it's like another YouTuber. Yeah. Like if he fights KSI, then mm-hmm. it's going to have a lot of buys because both of their things combined together. Right, right. Right. But him fighting, old, like he's like, I'm going to fight Nate Diaz. Nobody wants to see that shit. Nate Diaz is a 155-er. Exactly. Fights. Exactly. And the dude is... Come on, he's he's four hundred pounds. He's and he's at the tail end of his career as well. Yeah, you know, he, and he's never known to be a boxer either. Yeah. So if they were to fight, I think it's pretty given that Jake Paul's going to win that fight. It's hugely in his favor. Unless they know? do twelve rounds and Jake Paul gas and Nate Nate Diaz is you know, right. I'm still on, yeah. you know. <laughs> I'm uh, still gonna find the way. <laughs> I don't fuck. I don't give a fuck, motherfucker. I is it just me or is, does he get harder and harder to understand the older he gets? I don't even he, know if it's CTE or if that's just how he talks. He, no, he didn't mumble that badly when he was younger, though. It just got worse. Maybe he's just getting higher and higher. No. The show, so on the same card, there yeah. was a guy named Dr. Mike, and he fought somebody that's in Nate Diaz's camp. Uh-huh. And that guy talks just like Nate Diaz. <laughs> Both of them. Maybe they it's just a mumble shit. Thing. Maybe it's I don't, a stock thing. Fuck about nobody, I don't give a fuck about nobody. I don't give a fuck. It sounds like he bit his tongue really hard yeah. before he started speaking. He always has like these weird inhale. I don't fucking. <laughs> You know, just fucking these guys over here. They want to fucking fight me and shit. <laughs> I'm yeah. like, the fuck? I don't you're know like, what you're yeah, saying. You got the way did it, Chun Li. Yeah, they need to. <laughs> hey, when the, you know what the funny thing is? Like, people got mad at him for that. Yeah, I genuinely think he thought that's, yeah, that's what his name he was. Did. You could clearly tell he wasn't trying to be funny. He was yeah. trying to give the man props. Yeah, he's he like just, he was looking fly in his suit. He thought that was his name. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I guess. There's something wrong that he just defaults to Chung Lee because that's like such a, a wide known, you know. Yeah, he apologized too. He goes, hey, yeah. I don't even try and disrespect. Yeah. I, 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 I thought that was his name. <laughs> hey, yeah, I don't hey, fucking, hey, man. You know, he wants to go fucking Chung Lee. You know, fucking Chung Lee. I don't fucking care. But yeah, this guy, Dr. Mike, uh, really, really popular uh, popular YouTuber. Mm-hmm. He does like, uh, just medical. He's an actual doctor. He's oh, an okay. actual physician. Okay. He's buff as shit. Good looking as hell. Yeah. That's why all these dick i get it i fucking get it yeah you know he goes in boxes uh guy in at nate diaz camp he was also he was in the ufc for a little bit got cut went to he went to a lot of different organizations mm. and he's not a great striker himself you know his record's not that great but that fool dr mike got his ass beat <laughs> i did see that fight though yeah i wanted to see it because yeah. uh like dr mike i think he takes boxing very seriously okay and i think he had a background in boxing and stuff but Dude, you talk about a dude yeah. that doesn't know how to move his fucking head to save his life. Yeah, he got lit up. Huh? This dude got lit up. Same hit too. Overhand. Yeah. Overhand. Bink. Overhand. Yeah. Bink. Like, what the fuck are you doing, man? Like, <laughs> I get it though. You know, I give him props because he went back in there. He wanted to prove himself. He said that he wanted to win this fight so he could fight Logan Paul. Mm. Logan Paul would fuck you up. Yeah. Logan Paul is not a bad boxer. Like, yeah, he lost to fucking Floyd Mayweather and, you know, 
not amazing, but Logan Paul would beat your ass, Dr. Mike. Don't even fucking think about fighting Logan Paul. <laughs> he would absolutely destroy you. That boy is strong, quick, and fast, and he loves boxing. Right. I don't, like, people don't understand, like, these guys, yeah, they're not at the pro-level boxers that you're trying to see at, but they're not, like, some bums. Yeah, they're not some chumps. I mean, they're, they, they're about that life. Yeah. They're, they're taking training seriously. Yeah, they got the best trainers on earth, the right. most time and the most money, right. they're going to get better than the average person. It's For going sure. to happen. And they're already athletes. Yeah. So what the fuck are you talking about? That guy, Dr. Mike, got his ass beat, dude. <laughs> I mean, it, it's not a surprise. If it's his first fight and you're fighting second against- Second fight. Oh, his second fight. Yeah. Okay. And you're fighting against somebody who is a fighter regardless of, of their record or whatever, chances are you're going to get lit up. And that know? dude too, like Dr. Mike was bigger than him. The other guy was smaller mm -hmm. and he has like the Nate Diaz body too, all flabby as shit. Yeah. So <laughs> he just asked, man, yeah. is what it is, dude. Yeah. I mean, you know, with the Anderson and Jake fight, it was a little bit strange because I watched the fight because I was curious of like how Anderson was going to perform at that age. I didn't really expect him to win, you know, but I think it was like the first round and the second round, dude, he did do like virtually no punches. You're just moving. That's Anderson Silva, dude. Yeah, and everyone was like, "What? What are you like? Why are you not even throwing a jab? Like, what is he doing, right?" And so he just lost those rounds by default because Jake was actually throwing. I mean, nothing significant landed, but just he was more active, whereas Anderson was just moving around. And it was a kind of a confusing tactic in that sense. I'm like, is he trying to get him gassed out, and then he's going to start going on the offensive? Or you I mean, know? he always, I mean, even in his previous fights when he first started, I mean, he definitely threw a lot more, but he yeah. always downloads data. But yeah, yeah, I'm yeah. pretty sure he's trying to conserve his energy because he knows his age. That's why you right. should be just taking steroids. Right. <laughs> that fool Jake looks like, like, like he looks like he's on something. Yeah. It's because uh, his he's like 26. He looks like he's 35. <laughs> Fuck is with this kid. He looks so old now. I don't know, man. That fool looks like he's on fucking gear, man. Yeah. I, but again, the dude is in shape. You know, even if he isn't, he's 26, 27. He's yeah. young and fucking just fucking veiny as shit. <laughs> and the nah, cock. bro, I didn't look like that at 26. That's for damn sure. Oh, yeah. And let me tell you what I look like at 26. <laughs> Trash. <laughs> you just go back to my old videos. You'll see yeah. exactly what I look like. Yeah. But uh, one of the biggest things that people are asking us to talk about is fucking Elon Musk finally buying out Twitter for what? How much was it? $44 billion? Yeah, something ridiculous. I had man. no idea. You, Twitter was worth that fucking much. Yeah. It became such a huge platform. It was always like the the side chick I know. of social media. I know. Uh, and it's it's so ridiculous that he essentially bought it on a whim. Yeah. You know, it was like almost a joke turned into reality because he has the money to be able to do something like this that. This motherfucker been firing everybody left and right. Oh, yeah. Dude. Yeah. You know what the crazy thing about that is? Um, people have been finding out the salary of the people that have been getting fired. So the original CEO of Twitter was let go, right? You yeah. know how much her salary was per year? I think like fourteen million or something. Seventeen million. Yeah, right. Her it's severance ridiculous. was fourteen million. Yeah, it's ridiculous. He was getting paid seventeen million dollars. CEOs of big tech companies are making that kind of guap, man. That it's is no joke. I don't think Steve Jobs made seventeen million, dude. I don't know if. Maybe not, maybe his salary wasn't that high, but he was still, you know, worth a lot of yeah, fucking owned, money. He, I think he only owned like a percent, like 1% or something. Oh, was it that he, he didn't own a lot. Okay. He, I mean, that's how you grow your company. Yeah, he, yeah, he yeah. relinquishes everything else, but it doesn't matter. It's a gajillion dollar company. Like yeah. a percent or two is worth a lot. Yeah. Fact check that, please. I don't really know what I'm talking about. <laughs> uh, I, I think I read that in passing. Okay. But she was getting paid $17 million, um, And he let go of a lot of people. And obviously he's trying to, you know, trim the fat in the company. Uh, I don't know anything about Twitter. I don't know how anything functions, right? But I do know that there are a lot of companies who are big who hire a lot of useless people because I personally, as somebody who is who has to deal with brand deals and you know going to these companies, I know a lot of people in those companies that do not deserve a job there, mm -hmm. that they do absolutely nothing. And I have no idea why they're hiring these departments out. Like they show up, yeah. they just get on a couple of emails, they fucking chit chat around, they go get lunch, they come back, they do another few emails and they pretend like they're doing work by creating more work that is super fucking unnecessary. Yeah. I deal with that shit on the daily. So I'm pretty sure, I don't, I, I'm not saying that these are the people who got fired, but I know that when somebody comes into a company and they clean house, a lot of these people are let go because they're fucking useless. Yeah, I mean, that's the thing. I don't know if that is necessarily the case. I think it has to do a lot of with his like, uh, biases that he had as well because it's not like he did a thorough audit and then these people were let go he just started 
chopping people left and right as soon as he, you know, took over. Um, and it's pretty, it's been pretty entertaining to see like how the whole thing has been unfolding of like him trying to say, okay, we're going to charge $20 a month for the blue check mark. And then, um, uh, what was it? Stephen King was like, fuck that. You like, you guys charge $20 a month. I'm out of here. You're going to, you guys should be paying me, you know? And then he comes back with, okay, how about $8? <laughs> Are you serious? Dude? It, it, it's not a joke. It became like the thing. Now he's touting the whole $8. It's going to only go up to eight. Because I think it was seven bucks or something previously. But it's only going to go up a dollar now. Um, so it's like, you know. But it was like Twitter wasn't profitable. Like there was no profit. Yeah. So he's, that's what he's trying to like uh, implement with, with the increase in the blue monthly blue check mark thing. Right. Is like his argument was, hey, man, we can't make. Uh, money just from advertising you know we got we need we need revenue um he's like okay how about eight dollars so wait do you could just buy a blue check now or do you have to ha already have one and then in order to keep it you need to pay so yeah i think i think th there's still a vetting process for it but then if you have it then you got to pay you know um the the monthly amount and then that makes you higher i guess or like indexed better in their algorithm to become like you know the official person of whatever it what is. What is the purpose of it? I mean, it's just verification, I guess, that you are who you say you are, you know? You know what's so funny too? I know that I've, like, I, I kind of vaguely heard that. And I've also just been on my Twitter feed constantly. It's just these celebrities saying like, I'm out of here. Yeah. But then I check the next day and they're still on Twitter. <laughs> why, are you, why are you celebrities <laughs> so full of shit? Like, you do know that when you write that out, yeah. it, everybody reads it. Yeah. So they go, I'm done with this platform. This is done. And I'm like, that's cool. But you're still there. Yeah. <laughs> you just this, tweeted seven more times after, you fucking an, liar. Because it's an addiction. They can't, they can't get, you know, they can't get away from it. Celebrities are such full of shit, dude. They're literally full of shit. I mean, it's it's hard to like really blame them though, because look at look at their life. Look at how things are like in their favor, you know? It's like you got all of these uh, people praising them for every little thing that they do uh, or, or maybe not even anything that they do just purely based on the way they look, they're getting praised, Bro, right? Let me tell you something, man. There are people online who do things that are so bad, but they get praised for it and it yeah. kills me on the inside. I know, I know. Look, a common like, or, or, or I mean, a good example is kind of like the whole cyberbullying of Pete Davidson when Ye was pretty much encouraging his mm -hmm. fan base to like hate on Pete Davidson. Mm -hmm. And it's like, yeah, people are like, oh yeah, uh, that's, that's so funny. You know, that's so, that's so, uh, it's such a hilarious thing that you're doing yet. Yeah. It's like, nah, this guy's encouraging you to fucking like bully somebody because he's dating his ex-wife. Yeah. Purely for that matter, because he's small, he's a fucking megalomaniac and he can't handle the fact that somebody else is bagging his ex-wife. You know? And this is what I'm saying. Like, that's why nothing, I, I, and people don't really get this when I say this. Like, nothing online is real. Everybody's a fucking hypocrite because those people who also are, you know, a part of that shit, yeah. they're also going on their fucking, uh, their, what's it called, their moral parade, shitting on other people about morality. It's like, you, you have no right to say that. You're well, Elon Musk has been on that tip. And, and you know, that, that it fucking, like, just irritates me so much of like, He's a god to some of these people. You know, the, the cult-like following that he's built and, and kind of the persona that he's built for himself, he's, he's like, he can do no wrong. He can say no wrong. And it's just like, bro, look into this guy, man. This guy, I'm not going to go as far as calling him a con man, but he's, he's not, like, he's not a Tony Stark. Mm. That's, that's what he's been painted out to be. He's, he's the real-life Tony Stark. This guy's a great fucking marketer. I'll give him props for that. He's a great entrepreneur. I'll give him props for that. But he's not a fucking like innovator. You know, he's he's like with even with Tesla, that wasn't his company. That wasn't his idea. He bought into it. Right. Um, but people and, and, and one thing that I think sums up Elon Musk, he over promises and under delivers constantly. He said, we're going to have, you know, people in Mars by 2024. You know, that's what is the original statement. And then he kept changing. Oh, no, it's going to be this now. It's going to be. It's, so he just markets really well. 
And it, he just throws out these outlandish ideas. The Hyperloop idea, that's not a fucking original idea. He claims, he, he, make, he claims it like it is, that that's his original idea, but that's a failure, you know? Um, so, so many of the things that he's doing is, isn't necessarily a successful thing, but people just fucking gobble up everything this guy said. And then the whole thing with the fucking Dogecoin even, like he was playing into it and, and fucking making people lose money because he's joking about it. Like it's, it's like uh, the next big thing, you know, when maybe he's trying to be funny or maybe he's trying to be sarcastic. I don't know. But like, it's hugely irresponsible for somebody with a platform like that to be talking about shit. Like Dogecoin is a fucking meme coin. There's no value to it. There's absolutely nothing that has practical usage for it. It was literally created as a meme coin. And this guy's talking about like, oh yeah, you know, it, you know, Dogecoin is, it could be the next thing, you know, like, yeah. And, and a lot of people, that's the whole reason why Dogecoin had that uh, huge surge of people buying into it because of Elon Musk. He was solely responsible for that. So there are people saying, hey man, SEC needs to look into this shit. Like, you know, yeah. what is this guy doing? But now that he's, you know, the owner of Twitter, like, it's it's been pretty funny how things have kind of unfolded uh, ever since he took. So, I mean, the biggest criticism that he's getting right now is that he's it's it's the thing that people love about him and hate about him because there's two sides to this, right? Is that there was, you know, Twitter was becoming a space of like too much censorship, so people prefer the place to be free of zero censorship. You know what that led to? Five times increase in people using the N word. Yeah. <laughs> no, that's literally what it led to. I mean, I get it. I think this is the this is the this is the weird thing though. It's like for me, I'm not a major fan of too much censorship, right? Um, the 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 reason why is because I hate TikTok. TikTok is the most censored platform ever, but it's the most popular. Yeah, it is like I literally put up a video and I bleeped out a curse word and they took it down mm. and oh. they, they removed the audio. Yeah, because it's harmful to the community. Yeah, and it's just such a weird. But at the same time, harmful to the community. I, and I, and I, and I literally saw a video of yeah. a girl. Just in like a see-through shirt, bouncing her titties. Yeah, and that wasn't harmful to me. <laughs> Tell you something else. Well, you know what TikTok knows? My heart. <laughs> That's what TikTok knows. It, it knows it your boy like some tatas. Yeah, I get it. Yeah, you know. And so there's like that other set with like TikTok. I heard TikTok too. They're thinking about getting rid of it in the United States in general. Well, th that was a conversation that was on the plate when Donald Trump was in presidency. That, it's coming again recently. Yeah, yeah. that's the, and yeah. that's one thing that I completely agreed with him on is yeah. like, hey man, look at the security risk of what this app selling information. Right. I mean, it's it's China is basically harvesting that information, you know. Um, but nobody, nobody even fucking remotely has that thought when they're thinking about TikTok. Yeah, they just thinking about it as a platform or as quick content, you know. Where you get you could go viral with just a fucking dance video. So you try to make that dance video, and then you end up looking like a fucking loser who has no life and definitely has no rhythm. Yeah. And then you just expose yourself, and you got no fucking views. <laughs> that's that's Tick what TikTok is to me. Like you know? it's weird. Like TikTok is literally a, like I said, TikTok is the social media platform for talentless people to fool people and thinking that they're talented. Like I don't know how many times like I've seen a video where a girl just um voiceovers like a song and yeah. this dance is like a shitty little dance and it has like 400,000 likes or or not even the fucking dance they're just like looking into the camera doing like yeah i don't it's I, so cringe yeah it's so cringe for me dude i don't get it like i literally don't get it and i yeah. don't understand why a human being would do that and then love it oh like they, do you know why why they do it because the fucking views and the likes they're getting it fucking inflates their ego you know it makes them feel good it's the dopamine effect they they see the likes coming in. They're like, like if I met a person, right? Yeah. And they go, I go, oh, what do you do? And they go, oh, I do TikTok. And I and I was like, what do you do on TikTok? And they go, I just do what I'm like. I would literally look at them, smile, and I would walk the other way. <laughs> Not because I just don't want to say anything mean. Because yeah. if your talent in life is you just mouthing words, I guarantee you our conversations are going to be absolutely pointless. Well, that's. You know, that's the thing, right? You just said it is that it's talentless people. These people don't have talent, but because maybe they're pretty or handsome or whatever, they just get the following, right? Yeah. And it's, again, it's just so fucking cringe for me for like some, because I don't have TikTok on my phone. I, I, I never did, right? 
Um, and TikTok keeps removing my accounts. <laughs> Apparently, I'm a harm to the community. <laughs> <laughs> That's ironic. Your fucking existence of an app is the harm to the community, know. you know? <laughs> like, Apparently I'm harmful to the TikTok community. I have a I have another TikTok and I just I post like every once every yeah. like four, three, four months. But yeah, going back to the whole like freedom of speech thing and, and less censorship, yeah, that's what he's pushing for. But like it's it's hard, man, because it's like those very people. Um, and, and some of these being like, you know, crazy right wing nuts and stuff like that, who they are just looking for an excuse to be able to say the N word, you know, and it's like, no, don't censor me. Like, this is my opinion. This is freedom of speech. And it's like, yeah, but then there's also hate speech, too. And I don't really have a problem with hate speech getting censored. Now, the um, I guess the question becomes, well, what is considered hate speech? And who deems it to be hate speech, right? And I think those are some of the people that Elon Musk has been letting go is like some of those people who monitored those things, flagged well, those the, things. But this is what happens too. when, If the pendulum swings too hard here, the pendulum is going to swing back hard here. Mm -hmm. And that's what's happening. There is no moderation in this shit, right? Because I do somewhat agree with not so much Elon, but people who believe like there's too much censorship now where everything is offensive. An opinion is offensive. A yeah. thought is an offensive thing, yeah. right? So for example, like in the last two or three years, like what is the biggest argument? What is the biggest thing that has been talked about? What is a man? What is a woman? Gender identity. Mm -hmm. There, are, Everything is considered a form of violence now. Everything. <laughs> Everything's yeah, like when you say this, you don't know what's going to happen to me out on the street. Doesn't mean that's just a form of violence. Yeah, A lot of people can agree or disagree with this, right? But because there are such extreme swings in thoughts and ideas and nobody's willing to have conversation, mm -hmm. you have somebody here where, yeah, maybe these people on the Twitter, they, they put their personal feelings into this and they want to censor these things that personally hurt them. So they have a, an extreme bias towards what they feel about their personal life. Yeah. And they say that this is a representative of how everybody should feel. So yeah, those people I think should be fucking fired. Mm -hmm. And now you have Elon on this other side where he's like, now I just don't want any censorship at all. Which look, I'm kind of more on that side too, but then I'm not on the side too of like a lot. Like, like, do we have to allow people to say the n word with the hard R? I think we could <laughs> we could stop that. You know what I mean? Yeah. There's certain things that we could stop, yeah. right? Like, there's certain phrases like I want to, I don't know, rape you. I don't think we need that. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So because it goes here and here, there's no moderation in between, and nobody knows how to have a conversation with people, and everything is always there's no facts now. Facts don't exist anymore. Mm. Everything is opinion. Even science is now considered an opinion. I don't understand. That's why sometimes like when, I, when I'm in this space, right? And I've thought about it so many times. There are times I just never want to be in entertainment ever again. <laughs> like I just don't want to. Yeah. You know why? Because I, once again, it goes back to these celebrities. I fucking hate celebrities. Yeah. I hate them so much because they think that they are gods. They think that their opinions matter so much more than everybody else. They put, and, and they just pander to on the other side of hyper liberal ideas, right? Yeah. They just pander to it. Oh, is this the thing that I can say so I don't offend anybody? So I'm just going to keep going down here. And they don't think about the consequences, right? And when they do that, they say one fucked up thing. Those people who are on your side go and turn on you yeah. instantly yep, yep. because you are pandering to people. You didn't have any original thoughts. You didn't have any ideas. You had no foundation to say the things that you wanted to say. And now that when you're fucking on that cross and they're crucifying you, you're fucked now. Yeah. Because you were pandering to a side versus having your own original thoughts and sticking to an opinion, whether it was right or wrong. And that's why I just, I, I sometimes like being in entertainment makes me so sad. That's why like sometimes it's like, what if I just disappeared? I think I'd be better off. No, I, I know exactly what you mean. I mean, I'm not even in entertainment, but then when I just kind of look at our society and our culture today, I, I just sit there and I'm just like, dude, what the fuck is going on? What happened, man? And look, man, social media is to blame. Yeah. You know? It's a black mirror. We live in a black mirror yeah, episode. Yeah, straight up, straight up. It's 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 eerie how like closer we're getting to a black mirror episode, you know? Uh, how 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 it's our our reality is becoming a black mirror episode. And the thing that bothers me the most is that because people are just consumed by their phones and by these apps that they utilize and social media platforms they utilize, they don't even think. There's no like 
thought process there. It's just consumption. And then it's like you're in an echo chamber. You know, if you if you believe in a certain idea or a certain thing and that's what you're searching and then the algorithm starts suggesting that to you more and more and more, you're just stuck in this infinite echo chamber. And I, I, I know that's what I'm saying. I really wonder what happens to this is why the thing I don't understand about Twitter and like celebrities just harping about this shit, right? Genius Farts, this podcast is brought to you by ExpressVPN. I never go online without using my ExpressVPN. If you guys don't know what that is, guess what? If you're browsing online, everybody can see your personal stuff, your shit, and sell your information. And I don't want none of that. I want to browse the internet without the stress of people using me and selling my stuff. Well, guess what? With ExpressVPN, it keeps all your information encrypted and secure. Um... So yeah, you don't got to worry about that shit. And guess what? Most of the time, I didn't even realize I have ExpressVPN because guess what? It runs seamlessly in the background and it's available on all my devices. I personally use it on my phone because that's the device I use the most. Protect your online activity today with the VPN rated number one by Business Insider. Visit my exclusive link, expressvpn.com slash genius, and you can get an extra three months free on a one-year package. That's expressvpn.com slash genius, expressvpn.com slash genius to learn more. Genius Brain by David So is brought to you by BetterHelp Online Therapy. My friends, if you have not tried online therapy, you should try better help i know at times um we have these feelings where we feel like we're in a corner or we feel like we're in a dark place and even when you talk to your closest friends family members or girlfriend or boyfriend wife or husband or whoever that you confide in sometimes you need somebody outside who can help guide you um i feel lost a lot of the times too i'm doing so many things that at times i feel like i don't really focus on myself and that's where my better help online therapist comes in super affordable and just very very accessible and when it comes to something that i feel that a lot of people need accessibility is everything everyone deserves to feel their best better help makes it easier to get started as the world's largest therapy service they've matched millions of people with professionally licensed and vetted therapists available 100 online all the benefits of in-person therapy plus it's more convenient more accessible and more affordable just fill out a brief questionnaire to match with the therapist if things aren't clicking you can easily switch to a new therapist any time it couldn't be simpler no waiting rooms no traffic no endless searching for the right therapist get unstuck with better help learn more and save 10 percent off your first month at betterhelp.com slash genius that's better help h-e-l-p dot com slash genius this podcast is brought to you by rocket money my friends my lovely genius farts are you wasting money on subscriptions 80 percent of people have subscriptions they forgot about maybe for you it's an unused amazon prime account or hulu account that never gets streamed you money wasting idiot there's this great app i use that helps me track all my expenses and because of it i no longer waste money on subscriptions i don't even use Yes, my friends, you might have heard of it. It's called Rocket Money, formerly known as Truebill. Do you know how much your subscriptions really cost? Most Americans think they spend around $80 a month on subscriptions when they actually spend closer to $200. That's a lot of money. Well, guess what? With this app that I personally love using, it takes care of that for me. It's called Rocket Money, formerly known as Truebill. My friends, the app shows all your subscriptions in one place and then cancels for you whatever you don't still want. Rocket Money can even find subscriptions you don't even know you were paying for you may even find out that you've been double charged for a subscription to cancel a subscription all you have to do is press cancel and rocket money takes care of the rest get rid of useless subscriptions with rocket money now go to rocketmoney.com slash genius seriously it could save you hundreds per year that's rocketmoney.com slash genius cancel your unnecessary subscriptions right now at rocketmoney.com slash genius Nobody's fucking forcing you to be on this platform, you fucking loser. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's yeah. like, I can't believe I have to come into Twitter and see this stuff. You don't have to be on the platform. Right. Nobody expects you to be on the platform. Yeah. If you disappeared off of Twitter, nobody would give a fuck. One thing though, the only well, the only reason why I still have Twitter and that I use Twitter is um street fights. I love it. <laughs> I fucking love it. No, not for street fights, for breaking news. If mm. some world event is happening. It's like people are tweeting about it. People are putting a video, like even the the Korea incident. In, you in could Itaewon. read about it and then not participate. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I just I I look at it. I, I use the platform to like get uh, real time news and happening of what's you know what's going on. 
Um, for that purpose, it's very useful. But then everything else of all the fucking hate and the stupidity and just the complete nonsense that exists there, I'm like, ah, oh, boy. Here's the thing. Here's the other thing I think maybe why I kind of go towards the Elon side maybe a little bit more is because there's still an option on Twitter where you can curate what you see and what you don't want to see. Mm. That's why my, my Twitter is all jokes. Mm -hmm. Like any type of hyper serious stuff, there, there are a couple people I follow on Twitter. They don't even know who I am. I follow them because they're the obsessive human that just wants to comment on yeah. on all the current topic bullshit and lay their, like their lay their opinion on everything. I only follow them so I have topics for the podcast. Bro, you know what's crazy though is that like yeah, every once in a while when I do pop into Twitter for like news and stuff, it kept suggesting Elon Musk shit to me. And I said, "Do not suggest this. I don't want to fucking see what Elon Musk is saying. I don't give a fuck what he's saying. I don't look at him the way a lot of these millions of people look at him, you know?" It keeps still fucking suggesting it. And it became more um, more suggested once he was getting close to actually buying it out. And I'm like, what the fuck is going on here? I don't ever search for Elon Musk. I don't ever fucking talk about Elon Musk. I think it's just because he's such a high trending topic. He's I know, pop but up no I say what. do not. This is like irrelevant to me. Do not suggest. I've done that multiple times for a shit. Yeah, but that's what I'm saying. Like, because it's such a high trending topic, other people who are in your peripheral are still mm. talking about him. So, mm. so it's sneaking in somehow. Yeah. That's how it was with fucking Andrew Tate. <laughs> Every time I watch a YouTube short, yeah. Andrew Tate pops up at least one. I'm like, dude, I literally, I don't want to hear anything about Andrew Tate. Yeah. I don't have anything personally against him. Yeah. I just don't want to hear a stupid lisp. Yeah. Every time he talks about something, I don't want to hear it. Yeah. I, I just don't care about his shit. It's not entertaining to me anymore. So yeah. I just keep seeing his shit. I think with Ben Shapiro, for some reason, Ben Shapiro was popping up in all my shit. Like, I didn't want to hear his fucking squeaky little voice. Yeah. That's a voice I definitely don't want to hear. <laughs> yeah, this guy's angry about everything. I'm like, I don't want to hear any of this shit. But, you know, like, social media, once again, is a choice, right? Um, You don't have to participate in any of this shit. I know it's going to make you seem like, quote, unquote, like a loser. But, you know, a majority of my friends from back at home, like in Sacramento, they're not on social media. Right. They live their regular lives. They pop into Instagram, like, if you know, an engagement happens or they want to post their kids. They rarely, rarely ever post. Yeah. They're never on there. Yeah. And I'm like, oh, these are normal people, right? The other people on Twitter who are constantly tweeting 24-7 because they're waiting, just waiting and begging for somebody just to suck their virtual dick. <laughs> like, please, somebody <laughs> Please suck, retweet this. Somebody suck my please fucking validate, digital clip. Validate me. Yeah. It's just the saddest thing ever. It's so fucking sad, yeah, man. Like, I is. understand. I get it. Like, you need external validation. But I tell you this right now. There's a reason why when you don't get those things, it makes you feel a certain way. It makes you feel like a loser. <laughs> Look, man, if it wasn't for, you know, our brand, like, I wouldn't have Instagram. I wouldn't have, like, these social media. I mean, again, maybe I might have Twitter just for the news thing. But… I generally would not use social media. I'd be off the grid, right? I, I like social media. Like, don't get me wrong. I don't hate it. Mm. Right? I hate how people use it though, right? It's the application of what and, and kind of like how they allow it to ruin their lives. It, it can be a great tool and it's very entertaining. Yeah. Like I said, I love street fights. <laughs> I just saw one yesterday that was the most ridiculous street fight I've ever seen. Dog, one of my favorite videos I've ever saw on Twitter was two guys… Smoking crack and one person blew up somebody's ass. <laughs> yes. Dude, I would have never saw that if it wasn't for Twitter. Yeah. Thank God for Twitter. Yeah. So look, I understand. I'm not shitting on social media because I hate it. I love it. I made my whole life off of it, right? But when you don't know how to control something that's supposed to be a tool and it becomes a poison to you, then it becomes a problem. But that's what I'm saying is that people don't recognize that it's become a poison. It's like it's literally poisoning their minds. But… They're just so consumed by it and it's become so habitual that they're using it without thought. Mm. And that's my problem with it is that like… TikTok, man. Oh, yeah. I mean, TikTok is a huge reason to blame. I mean, we're seeing people develop ADHD in real time right now. Dude, I, dude, I, I recognize that in myself. Yeah. Like when I started watching more shorts and shit, I, I started having uh, trouble focusing. And it's been fucking up my work. Mm -hmm. And now you're seeing people too who can't pay attention. And I've seen yeah. it multiple times. Yeah. And why do you think that is? Because day in and day out, just swipe, 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 two seconds, swipe, swipe, swipe. And it's like, that's what I'm saying. You see, you are seeing them develop ADHD in real time. Dude, that's what's happening. Thing, one of the videos, the type of videos that I fucking hate are cooking videos on TikTok. Mm -hmm. Because 
and Instagram lately because everything is a fucking one second jump cut. <laughs> pop, pop, ping, pop. I'm like, dude, I can't see shit. Yeah. I don't know what the fuck you're making. Yeah. But that's the attention span of these people, right? Yeah. But that's why you also see too, like I always shit on some of these like YouTube short chefs. Not, and there's a lot of great ones that I follow and I fuck with and I'm going to interview them on this podcast too. I think they do really great. But those are the people that I want to, to have a lot of shine because I think they're doing a great job. Some people too, and I've, I've shit on these people where they, they find a recipe that they see online real quick and they go, let me teach you how to make this. You don't know how to make it. Don't fucking make it. Yeah. Don't make it. And they misrepresent foods. They misrepresent cultures. They represent everything just because they want views. Well, that's the thing though, is that they have the platform to be whatever it is that they're claiming to be. You know, they're, they're these, uh, what do you, what's the word for it? Like self-appointed professional at whatever it is that they're doing. And know? I've seen that their food that they make and yeah. I read the comments like, oh, that looks so bomb. I was like, listen, I know what look, I, I know for a fact that food doesn't taste good. Yeah. I just know. <laughs> I know it doesn't. There's a lot of people who are good at dressing. Look, I have a friend, you know this friend too. She's one of those people that, you know, always posts up her recipes and shit. I've eaten her food multiple times and I hate it. <laughs> hate it so fucking but, much. But that's the thing, bro. People can't taste through the screen. All they're think, all they're looking at is the presentation, right? It's the same thing with fighting, man. Once you fight, you know what's up. Once you cook, you know what's up. Right, right. But people, you know, maybe the food might taste like shit and, and the recipe sucks, but they're presenting it in a way that makes it look Instagram worthy, you know, like gram worthy or like TikTok worthy. And it's like, oh man, that looks nice. So it must be good. Yeah. And that's kind of, that's it. How many people are actually going to try the recipe? Probably not that many. Yes. Right? <laughs> you know, a lot of people just kind of, I wish sometimes like integrity mattered a little more and integrity just, it's slowly starting to disappear. That's why I always give shit to my buddy fucking Jason Chen. His, him is shitty ass fucking comedy videos. <laughs> not even comedy videos. Like but, I said, he's the only person I know that covers music and covers jokes. <laughs> but not even integrity though, bro. Just qualifications. Like what qualifications do you have to be talking about this or doing this professionally. Dude, there's a kid I know too. Uh, duh, that's such a good thing to talk about. Just because, listen, I've kickboxed on and off for what, three, four years, right? Mm -hmm. Have mm -hmm. you ever seen me do a tutorial on how to kickbox? Yeah. Never. You know why? Because I am not qualified. Yeah, I might be able to do it here and there. Yeah. I am not qualified to teach anybody shit besides somebody maybe how to throw a jab and a cross and do some stuff here and there. Yeah. There's a kid that I used to bring uh, when we used to train that I used to bring him along. Yeah. And I used, I stopped bringing him because I got so mad. I started beating the shit out of him <laughs> because this kid would talk a big game, right? And he would do um, Muay Thai tutorials on how to do stuff. And I'm like, I beat the living shit out of you today. Like what? The audacity you. Yeah. to fucking sit here and make a video about how to do something that you've never done in sparring. I've never seen you do. This is my favorite setup combo kick to do in sparring. Funny. I sparred you 10 times. You've never been able to do that. <laughs> Bullshit. But that's what I'm saying. Everybody is a professional. Everybody's a genius. Everybody's a prodigy. And like, they're free. Like, yeah, even if people call them out on the bullshit, they can still freely post it. You know, they could keep posting tutorial videos, keep posting, you know, how-to videos, even though they have zero qualifications, even though they might be completely butchering whatever it is that they're showing how to do it, but they have the ability. And that's yeah. the difference. That's the thing too. That's why like, I, I don't think people understand like why I repost or I post people that I really like a lot because I want them to represent people with integrity and credibility. Speaking of, I saw that fucking, you gave our boy Brian Dos Reese a shout out. Yeah, I saw that video uh, before you posted it actually. Amazing. And I was like, oh shit. I remember when we shot that because the the beginning was, was from our lookbook. Amazing. Yeah, from our first collection. And see, people like that, right? It's like people like, that who fucking put in the, the work, paid their dues, and has that raw fucking talent deserve to get that type of shine. So I, I understand completely what and you're saying. And by the way, too, this is not me saying that, oh, whenever I create content, I need to be credible. No, you can create content for fun. Yeah. I think when you pretend like you're a source of knowledge and information uh, and you're very knowledgeable about something, you lie to your audience and then you misrepresent things and people are learning garbage from you, right? And you like, that's the issue that I have. Anybody can go ahead and cook and say, hey, I like this shit. That's great. I fuck with that too. 
But when you like, for example, like you 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 do that with um, I don't know. Let's say you're doing a video about how to fix a car. Mm-hmm. You don't know how to do it. <laughs> and then somebody's like, you know what? I'm gonna try this out, and yeah. they fuck up their car. Yeah. And you're like, but I was just making content. Yeah. I'm this like, is how you jump a car. You put it on the metal. Make sure it has yeah. contact with the metal. And then make sure that you put one on your tongue. <laughs> yeah. Because your body is made of electrons, and so when you do that, it'll recharge your car. This person explodes, and then your reason is like, well, you know, I just I was just making content. Yeah. As a joke. Yeah. And like I said, I'm all for that type of stuff. Always make content. Try new things. Whatever. But the snobbery of thinking that. You want to be a person. You want to be a person of of knowledge, and you want to teach people when you don't know how to do things is stupid. And by the way, that bullshit gets caught really fast. I know, but everybody's a self proclaimed expert these days. You know, everybody's an expert in everything, and they just think, oh, you know, I read one paragraph on this. I'm an expert. I'm gonna talk about this. You know, or you know, I'm gonna I'm gonna give advice on this, or oh. I'm gonna school people on this. And the worst part about that too, and this is for you people out there. When you clearly have just learned something yesterday and then you make a post shaming other people for not knowing something that you learned yesterday, you are such a piece of shit. (laughs) That's the worst. It's like, did you know about this? A lot of people don't know about this about African culture. Neither did you. (laughs) You just wiki that. I can tell you didn't know because you're reading off a piece of fucking paper. And then you shame people for not knowing things. It's like, they don't know. They're allowed to learn. You know who did that to me? Who? Okay. Because <laughs> I, I posted that clip of, or not a clip, the picture of the right way to peel a banana. Uh-huh. And then it's the other end. The, mm-hmm. the, the top with the knot, that's not the right way to peel a banana. The, the right way is the, the tail end, the yeah. bottom. I didn't know that. And I, you and didn't I, know that? Yeah. And I came across it on the internet and I was like, oh shit, I didn't know that's the right way to peel a banana. So I shared that. On my story of like, did you know, right? Because I had just learned it. And Kay like, man, you fucking boomer ass, bro. <laughs> people, people been, <laughs> people been I'm know- shaming you too. Yeah, people been knowing that, bro. And I'm like, what? Was there like a viral video that I missed or something? He's like, bro, it's been like on the internet forever. I learned that shit in, in elementary school. Really? Yeah. Yeah, I never knew that that was the right way to peel the banana. So I was just sharing my newfound <laughs> I wasn't claiming to be an expert. I just like, did you know? You know, I just found that out. And then this was like, man, you fucking boomer. <laughs> I'm like, hey, bro, I'm just trying to share the fucking knowledge wealth, man. No, I just yeah. found out. It's, it's weird, man. Like like I said, too, I, got, I love the internet. I love what it does. It's such a powerful tool. And maybe some people get tired of me harping on this. But I just want people to, to have their mental health in check. Because oh, yeah. It fucks with your mental health so much, man. That game of comparison starts to eat at you so much every day. You are never happy ever because you're basing your happiness on what other people say about you. Yep. And I see it eat these kids up. They cry about it. They think about suicide. They they feel like their their value is zero because you're basing your value on things that don't exist. Yeah. People's opinions about you change every day. Somebody will call you a piece of shit. They'll give you five bucks and you say, that's a good guy. <laughs> I've seen it happen so many no, fucking for sure, times. For sure. And and especially if they're basing it on just so such like superficial things. They're basing it on the way you look. And all of a sudden, like, yeah, I find you hot. But then you did something that displeases me. And now you're a piece of shit human being. You know? The, the people, you know what the thing, thing that Mariel said about me when she first met me? She goes, Not, all your friends are so different. She goes, none of your friends that I meet are like each other. They're mm-hmm. all different. I was mm-hmm. like, how do you make friends like the way that you do? Yeah. I was like, they're different, but yeah. they have one thing in common. Yeah. I was like, the biggest thing in common is that they're fucking weird. Yeah. And they know that they're weird. They're very confident. <laughs> that they're fucking oddities. <laughs> right? I like people who have a strong sense of self. Right. And they own up to their identity. Right. You know why? Because those people are the most trustworthy. Because anytime that they speak about stuff, it's truthful to who they are. I don't have to second guess who they are. I know, like, for example, one of my friends that she hates, fucking hates this dude. And I understand. He's mm-hmm. rough around the edges. Mm-hmm. This motherfucker says the N-word hard <laughs> oh, all the time. Not with no. a hard R. Okay. But, like, just, he's just stuck in that time because yeah, he went yeah. to the military. Okay. Curses up a fucking storm. Does all this. She goes, why do you like him so much? She goes, that's how he is. That's how he grew up. Yeah, he's authentic. He's authentic to himself. Yeah. The thing about him is, is like he's the one of those dudes that if I was stranded in the middle of a desert, I called him up. He's dropping everything. He's picking me up, and he's gonna find where the fuck I'm at to make sure I'm alive. Right. He is one of those human beings. Like the core of this person is very fucking genuine. Mm-hmm. He's rough around the edges because he had a very fucked up life growing up, but he's a good fucking person. All my friends are weird as shit, but the one thing that they have in common, their identity is 
very, very sound. They know who they are. I know that when they say something, I know that their next move. I know what their next move is. I know I know them. You're right. They're never trying to please me. They're yeah. not trying to please other people. They just do what they do. Some of them are geeks, anime nerds. Some people are fucking weird, hardened criminals. Some of them are, you know what I mean? But I can yeah. trust them. Yeah. Because I know what they say is honest. Even though if I think that it's wrong or it differs from what I believe, at least I know what they're who they are. Yeah. You know? Yeah, this is funny because like you, you bring that up about Mariel. Uh, sometime back, like we were talking about something related to you. And I was like saying, oh, Dave. And she's like, since when do you start calling him Dave? I was like, I call him Dave all the time. Since day one. She's like, I've never heard you call him Dave. I was like, I'm pretty sure <laughs> I've been around you enough times to yeah. like for you to hear me call him Dave. And she's like, who are you? <laughs> I was like, what, 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 my, my identity as a person changes now because you had this newfound revelation that I call him Dave, you know? Man, she's funny, man. Yeah. But, you know. Yeah, me when we got to know each other, like yeah. she's when she, I took her to weddings in Sacramento. She goes, "All your friends are of all different ethnicities." <laughs> I was like, "What do you mean?" Because she grew up, all of her friends were Korean or Taiwanese. Yeah, she goes, "You have like people who are like Indian, they're Pakistani, they're mm. fucking you know Chinese, they're fucking African, they're Black American, uh, not a lot of white people, Mexican." <laughs> you know what I mean? But she goes, "This is like crazy." Like she's like, "It's like the UN." <laughs> I'm like, "Yeah, like I." I've never judged people based on what they look like, how cool they are, what they dressed as. They just were really good people. Yeah. And I've kept those friends for a very long time. One of the things too, like, I don't give a fuck what anybody else says. One thing that I know that I'm very good at is keeping friendships. So if I've ever had to cut out a friend, you have to know that that person was a piece of shit. <laughs> I've had the same friend since I was fucking like five years old. Yeah. Ray, I've known Ray since I was two. Right. Like, I keep friendships for a very long time. I've now known Edric for fucking 10 years. Right. I keep friends for a very fucking long time. In order for you to leave my life, you have had to have done something terrible. Yeah. <laughs> like fucking terrible. Because I can reconcile a lot of things. Yeah. Like your core character as a human being has to be rotten to the core for me to have cut you out. Yeah. Like, so, and I think that's like one of the things Mariel noticed about me. She goes, you have really good people around you. Like your, your friends are really fucking good. And the people that you have let go, like they are definitely trash human beings. I was like, yeah, because I I let my guard down. I let certain people in because based on what other people felt about them. Yeah. Last person I cut out was based on I I met this person uh, through my friends. And I, when I first met this person, I remember I looked at my friend and I was like, I want you to keep this person away from me. I don't trust them. And I think that they are fucking terrible. Yeah. And like, oh, you don't know about their past history. They're actually really good. And against my better judgment, I let this person in my life and they fucked up a lot of things. And mm -hmm. I had to cut them out. And that's because I didn't trust my fucking gut feelings. And from now on, even I had a conversation with these friends uh, when we hang out. I was like, they're like, oh, I want you to meet, you know, a couple. I was like, nope. Anybody <laughs> you bring in my life, yeah. I don't ever want to meet them. Right. I was like, you are my friends. Your friends are not my friends because you have a habit of calling people your friends way too fast. Right. That's my that's my really good friend. Really? When you meet them? Yeah. Three months ago? They're not your friends. You don't that's fucking my, know these people. That's my dog right there, yeah. bro. That's my, I trust him more than my this life. This motherfucker thinks everybody's his fucking friend, dude. It's the most fucking worst quality about him. Yeah. Not that he's a bad person, but yeah. because he trusts everybody. Yeah, too naive. Too naive? Yeah, too naive. Oh, this person's, why, why is he good? Because what? He did stuff for you? Do yeah. you know who you are? Yeah. Like, of course he did stuff for you. He wants something from you. Yeah. Everybody's nice. Doesn't mean that they're a good person. Right. And that's why there's that saying is like, if you really want to know the character of somebody, look at who's there at their funeral. Yeah. You know, look at who shows up to their funeral. And yeah, I, I think that is a good point to make is that like, yeah, the people that you have around you is indicative of like, yeah, what type of person you are. You yeah. know, you got a bunch of fucking thugs around you. Chances are you pretty rough around the edges yeah. too, you know? A hundred percent, man. Yeah. And as I'm saying too, like, you know, this whole social media game, what Elon Musk is doing, like, you guys are letting this guy control, like, your emotions and your feelings a little too much. This guy is a kid in a candy store. He's he's odd as shit. He's doing whatever the fuck he wants. If you guys don't want to be on his platform, you don't have to be, but stop giving him power, you know? Like, mm. and I know it's hard, but the more you pay attention to this shit, the more it grows. Yeah. And it's just like, you could choose to make this platform what you want to make it. it and can, it's, it, it, look, it's not necessarily hard, right? They just have to do it. And, and then they'll realize, oh, you know what? I'm not missing out on anything. 
You're not. Yeah, and you might even actually feel better for the as a result of it because you might have an inferiority complex seeing all this shit that you see online and comparing yourself constantly to them. Dog, man. I don't understand sometimes too. Sometimes when I meet people, I can see it in their eyes. Like I'll go to some some events here and there that I'm kind of forced to go to and they'll be like, oh, like, oh, this, I was like, you probably know who this person is. I'm like, nope, don't know who you are. <laughs> right? Like, oh, you think you're too good. You could, it's that look like, yeah. oh, he thinks he's too good. It's like, no, I just don't know who the fuck you are. <laughs> I don't watch shit on YouTube. Yeah. You know what I watch on YouTube? I watched this guy named Slava Shashmenko. He, he did, he's a chiropractor in Russia that that <laughs> oh, that gives chiropractic adju- adjustments oh. to half naked Russian girls. Oh, okay. But it's not because they're half naked. Yeah. It's that his chiropractic adjustments are very unique. Like he does his shit where he cracks this lower back. It's amazing. Well, you know, that's a thing on YouTube is oh, the know. chiropractors and, and half naked girls. But like it's it's a very popular niche category. Oh, I know. There's some yeah. like pervy fucking chiropractors. Yeah. But I like him because his cracks are fucking loud. Oh, they are so good. There are other people who are probably just as good, yeah. but their audio shit isn't good. So the, the cracks aren't that loud. Yeah. It helps me fall asleep. Uh. So unless you're, unless you're fucking <laughs> uh, Dr. Gregory from Houston Chiropractic, Unless you're Dr. Rahim, yeah, um, and you're or Dr. Uh, fucking uh, Tyler Big and Ho. <laughs> well, I, I think what you're saying though uh, sheds light on a on a good point to bring up is that like you know once you're in the content creation space or like you're an influencer or whatever, people assume that oh because you also create content, you consumed content, and so you should be aware of everybody else. And so it's like kind of like an entitlement thing and like an ego thing. Yeah, a narcissistic thing. It's like, nah, bro, I just fucking do this for a living. But And it's fun. Yeah. So I don't know you. I don't know you. I'm, <laughs> I'm sorry. What do you do? Yeah. Oh, you you uh go into a bath and you put beads in it? <laughs> yeah, I don't fucking know you. Yeah. That's cool, man. But I'm sorry. I've never seen your content before. <laughs> what? Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, you. You walk around and you throw pies in each other's face yeah. and you start doing dance challenges. I don't fucking know you. <laughs> Unless your buddy's DIY teaching me how to fix cars that I'll never fix. Right. I don't know you. Right. I watch some odd shit on YouTube. Yeah. I dude, there's <laughs> there's somebody that I met. I freaked out when I saw him. They're like, I've never seen somebody react the way that you have meeting me. I was like, you know, I I, I watch your shit religiously. Yeah. Like I fucking watch your shit. And it's odd too because. I'm not afraid of being a fan. Mm. Like I like fandom yeah. because people are fans of me. I like to give that same type of love and respect. Back. Right. So I have no shame in that shit. <laughs> and um, I met this guy who does like carpentry work. And I was like, and I was like naming all these videos. They're like, I've never met somebody who got this excited meeting me. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, you don't meet, like, I was like, don't you do comedy? You meet other yeah. comics? I was like, I get that. Who fucking cares? Yeah, yeah. I don't watch the shit. I watch your stuff. But but how big of a following does he have? Not that big. Like over 100K? Less- over 100K for sure. Okay, okay. I mean, so he has a decent size following. Yeah, it's then. pretty decent. Yeah. But I think the way I freaked out, I was mm. like, dude, I fucking love you, bro. You know what one of my rabbit holes recently was? Was just looking up clips of rabbit animals. I just you're serial killer. <laughs> no, That's bro. I just, you know, it's so fascinating what rabies does. Rabies is a fucking very very fascinating and lethal disease man like it's dude there's there's no cure for it right it, if it, it gets too far right yeah um it, it fucking um I just think- controls you it takes over your fucking body you know it, it basically is like melting your brain you have no control and then so to see like this the evolution of of like a, a being an existing being being withered down to basically nothing is really fascinating. I heard like the if you you, you catch it on early before it gets too far, that's what's yeah, curable. You can go get get the shots. And you at the have hospital. to get a shot in your belly button or some shit. Oh, I don't know where they got to place it. It's painful as shit. Yeah, I don't know where they got to place a shot. But yeah, if if like right away you get, you know, bit. exposed, yeah, bit, scratched, or whatever. And they but, just give you the shot. Yeah. And 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 you suspect that that animal had rabies. Then yeah, you gotta get to the fucking. If I hospital. get bit by any fucking animal, I'm going to get a rabies shot. I don't give a fuck. Yeah, give it to me. Yeah, yeah, fucking give it to me for sure. It's it's better to err on the side of safety with something like that because it's a hundred percent fatality rate. Otherwise, you know what's one of the videos I used to watch a lot? I used to look specifically people getting kicked by horses. 
See, that's what I'm saying. There's there's these things that are just for whatever reason in your mind is just fascinating and interesting. It's not. I'm sure it's not because you 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 know revel in in the video of watching somebody get seriously injured. It's just that the act of a horse kicking is just like it's so powerful. Yeah, and I'm always thinking too. Like I don't know. Listen, I don't even like smoke like that, mm-hmm. right? I only take um, CBD and Delta A and TC if I want to sleep. Yeah, it helps me relax, or if I before I spar or something. But I'd be thinking of some. I'm like, I always I look at horses and I'm like, who the fuck was the person that walked up to this thing and said, I'm gonna ride you? Like, who the fuck was that <laughs> or, guy? Or or decides to startle the horse. I mean, what you think was gonna happen, bro? Like, I don't think you understand how big a horse is. Like there, horses are huge. There is a reason why cars power is defined in horse, horse power. power. <laughs> That's exactly why. And I don't think people understand too how big fucking moose are. Right. Oh, moose are fucking terrifying. They're, Bro, huge. If a fucking moose comes after you, man, you pretty much just say your prayers. They're like and- the size of like a short bus. Yeah, bro, they're huge. They're huge, yeah. man. Like I remember, uh, I forgot what the fuck I saw, but I saw a deer. Mm-hmm. I was like, oh, deers are like the size that I expected deers to be. But like, if you see like the male stag, yeah, fucking yeah. Hu- scared the shit out of me. Yeah, and then a moose is bigger than that. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Crazy. That's why you don't fuck with nature, bro. You don't fuck around with that. You're going to find out. You fuck around and find have out real quick. Have you ever been quick. to a wolf sanctuary? No, I haven't. Dog. Have you Wolves seen- are huge, though. I've seen a wolf. People think they're the size of dogs. No, they oh, no, dwarf no, no. dogs. No, no, no. So there's like… Wolves are descendants from these other type of animals. I forgot what they're called. I'm not sure they're called lichens or whatever. But they're… It's an extinct canine, right? Mm-hmm. And so the the one that's the closest to them are gray wolves. Mm-hmm. Gray wolves are, are huge. Giant. They're fucking Gigantic. huge, man. So they're like the size, maybe even a little bigger than mastiffs. Yeah. And mastiffs, when standing up, are like six and a half feet tall. Right. Wolves' heads are like the size of our torso. Yeah. They can fucking… Kill. They used to hunt humans. Right. Like these lichens. They used yeah. to hunt fucking humans. They could shred you apart for sure. Yeah. Easy. So, I, I went to a, a wolf sanctuary and these are like hybrid wolves. Yeah. And they're not even as big as gray wolves get. Yeah. And they were so big. It's, I, I couldn't get inside because I was too scared. Yeah. I mean, they're like, oh, they're fine. Like, you just got to make sure you don't move or do anything. I'm like, no, I'm not going in then. I'll see them on this side of the cage. <laughs> I'm okay. Yeah. I'm not trying to be the first test subject. That's a common misconception that people think wolves are about the size of dogs, like a medium-sized dog to a large dog. <laughs> no, no, no. no you think about coyotes. Yeah, exactly. These wolves fucking dwarf dogs so like the thing about wolves too like i went to this rabbit hole like researching wolves um you can't reprimand wolves like you do with dogs because they're not domesticated right they do things in in the hierarchy of packs yeah so if you attack them that's a challenge and it's a fight right so if you try to chastise a wolf no no matter how long you've been they love you they're friends they'll they'll shred you apart because in in the wolf pack now that's a challenge right so you can't spank them hit them on the nose or tell them no they will Fuck you up. Did you see, do you, do you ever see the thing with the wolf whisper? No. The dude who fucking like lives with wolves? No. He, he feeds on like raw, or no, no, he like cooks a liver and he puts it in a pouch, but he puts it inside of, of like a, a raw animal. And then he scrapes it out of there and eats with the wolves so that he's a part, he's like constantly part of the pack. Wears the same clothes all the time that he interacts so that the scent is there. Um, Disgusting. Yeah, abs- dude, this guy is a fucking animal, and is I'm not. He, is he a uh, white? Yes, <laughs> the great white wolf. Yeah, of course. Yeah, he's. I think he's Australian, and his passion is like wolves, and he he owns a wolf sanctuary and all that. But he's. Um, I think at one point he was the alpha in his pack, and yeah, he like completely like, uh, what do you call it? Made himself a wolf, a functioning wolf in that pack, doing the same thing as they do. And just watching it, I'm like, damn, bro, you must really, really fucking love wolves and be passionate about them. Fuck that. To do that kind of sh- He has like scratches all over his face because, you know, it's not the wolves are trying to hurt him. But like when they're like playing or showing affection, they obviously human skin is a lot more fragile than a wolf's coat, right? Why so- people be doing crazy <laughs> shit, dude? I just saw a video on Twitter. Shout outs to Twitter once again. Yeah. Of this girl, she's like known to swim with tiger sharks, like specifically a tiger shark that she's developed a relationship with over the years, yeah. right? So this bitch, fucking, she's about to dive in, right? And she p- dips her head in to see the water. And then when she pulls her head out, a fucking shark comes up to bite her face. Oh my God. And she's God. like, 
<laughs> La- I'm like, bitch. Yeah, you almost died right the now. What fuck are you talking about? And people in the comment section, they're like, well, as you can see, the shark didn't bear its teeth. So it was just playing. The fuck do you know about a shark? Did that you shit, talk to it? Yeah, this shit don't look like play to me. I didn't even know sharks play, bro. I, that's what I'm saying. What the fuck are you talking about, man? Yeah. White people crazy, dude. Oh, man. It, it, that reminds me of the story I fucking told you at the shoot about John. Hey, guys, look, a giant salmon. Yeah. Motherfucker, that ain't no salmon, bro. That's a shark, man. Hey, let me tell you something. John's been on this podcast. Um, You're an idiot. <laughs> John, I, I used to respect you a lot. The fact that you were in the ocean and then you looked down at something and you said that was a salmon. Number one, not pronounced salmon. Number two, you're in the fucking ocean in Catalina yeah, Island. Exactly. Why the fuck would that be a salmon, John? Exactly. It ain't freshwater, bro. <laughs> Come that back is- on this podcast. I'm going to just call you Salmon. <laughs> so so to give you guys a little quick context on, on what the story is about. Um, uh, we were in Catalina and uh, we were snorkeling. And then um, I was trying to get out of the water. And then the waves pushed me. And I was around like coral reefs. And it pushed me into the coral reefs. I got hurt. And I was like, oh, fuck. I can't get out this way. So I swam around an area like well into the ocean that says do not swim beyond this point. But that was like the only close and safe way to get out of the water and then so i'm swimming around and then uh you know our friend john uh looks down and he's like hey guys look a giant salmon and then so i look down and it's a shark about it's about like five six feet you know big i couldn't really tell but it was about 10 15 feet beneath the feet and he was circling around the seaweed you know and i was like i Fucking as a motherfucker, that ain't no salmon. As a shark, skip the fuck out. So everybody started swimming as fast as they could, right? We get out the water. Luckily, nothing happened. And then um, I get out and I see why. I understand why this shark was circling. On my leg was pouring fucking blood. The coral reef just shredded my fucking knee. And you know because it's I'm in the water for that long too. It got softened, and then so it just like shredded my knee. I still have the scars there too. And Literally, my fucking leg just turned red because the blood was just pouring out. And then I started walking. And then what did John say? Bro, you have Kool-Aid on you? <laughs> He's like, how you do that? How you get a paint on your leg? He's like, well, you going to share it? Can I get some? <laughs> but yeah, that that's why the shark was circling un- underneath my foot but un- or under our feet. But John thought it was <laughs> I've lost salmon. All, I've lost all respect for this man. <laughs> <laughs> the fact there's like so many things wrong with this story yeah I know. <laughs> well guys that wraps up this episode of the genius brain podcast if you guys are looking at this and you're looking around you already see the fall collection it's all lined up oh yes sir. the tote bag is dropping we got the socks on uh i got the, the the cropped heather gray pants on fucking love these tangs i have the black version of it on right here we have the new knit sweater that's coming out right here as well so fucking comfortable Yeah, man. Uh, For everybody who has bought our Secret Society pieces that kept the company going on for so long, thank you so much. The company has grown so much since then. Uh, Like I said, I want to make sure that uh, everybody has this in the closet. One piece, a t-shirt. I don't give a fuck. I just want this to be a staple because we're a brand with the mission. And I I really do hope that you guys have continue to love it anyways. Yeah. And and like, you know. Oh, the corduroy hat too. Fucking fly shit. Oh, that's right. Yeah, we got the cord hat. We have five different colors coming out with this. Um, I can't wait for the cord hats, man. Oh, <laughs> I can't wait. By the way, the colorways too, a lot of them. Yeah, it's sick. I mean, we we spent a good amount of time like coming up with the color palette for this season. And we feel like we, because last season was the first time we introduced colors. Dude, it was a risk. Yeah, it was a big risk because people who are familiar with us know that we've always done black and white. And, you know, it's just, it just stems from our like personal aesthetic choice. Like we like black and white, we like monochrome stuff and that's, it's reflected in the work, but you know, we, we decided to try to shake it up a little bit and we're like, dude, we don't know how the fuck the, the audience is going to receive this, how the community is going to receive this. And like people loved it. And then, so we're like, okay, let's try some more colors this time around. Um, we got colors like mauve, you know, we got the turquoise color that you love, which people think it's a navy but it's kind of like in that spectrum of like turquoise navy, turquoise yeah 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 um and then we got like brown which we've never done that brown came out so fucking nice yep yeah when we were going over it we're like okay this could go one of two ways this color is either going to come out looking like shit literally look like shit or it's going to be dope yeah luckily it came out really dope 
Um, so yeah, we got these new colors, this moss color here. I don't know if it reads on camera for the people who are watching, but we have different speckles of color here. It's not just a green. Like you're going to see like a little bit of orange, like a little bit of a darker green and a lighter green. And it creates this kind of like moss looking color, but it's so sick. It, you'll see it once you guys get it. Once you see it in person, feel it in person, you're going to be like, okay, I understand now why every time I fucking talk about shit, I say I'm so excited about this. Yeah, thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm not just saying that. I'm not saying, oh, I'm just excited because I feel like I'm obligated to hype people up. No, we are generally or genuinely excited about the new shit we're doing because we're constantly stepping and look, it up. If you love this shit, tell people about it. Tell your friends about it. Because I know that when you're walking please. around, people are asking you where you get these pieces. Because listen, I'm trying to get us to do a fucking denim program already. Oh, man. And we need some fucking money for yeah. that shit. Guys, denim we, denim is not an easy thing yeah. to do, especially if you're trying to do it domestically. And you got to definitely be on a certain level and have a certain amount of capital in order to like pursue that program. Especially if we want to do it right, which is with everything. If we're going to do it, we want to do it right. We want to do it legit. Make sure that you guys are getting you know the best quality we can possibly offer you for the price points we sell it at. Um, so... Yeah, just to echo what Dave said, please help help us spread the word. Word of mouth is, you know, best type of marketing. And um, yeah, once we grow, I mean, look, it's really simple, guys. In order for us to do the things that we want to do and do it bigger and better, we need more revenue. We need more growth. We need more eyes on the brand. And luckily, it's been a great uh, growth process for us in this past year. But to get to where we're trying to get to, like, because we talked about this. Our goal is to become a household name at some point, you know? And in order to become a household name, you can't be fucking operating with the skeleton crew and like strapped for resources, you know? Um, but we're getting there. We're getting there slowly but surely. And I'm always saying this, but just always full of gratitude and thanks and appreciation for the people who've been riding with us, whether they've been there since 2017 or they came on at some point during the process, we appreciate you guys 100% because we know that we wouldn't be here without you guys. Well, guys, uh, cop all that stuff. You can follow Ed at Ed2TWO. And then you can also follow Secret Society at S-C-R-T-S-O-C-I-E-T-Y. Check out the website. The fall collection will be dropping soon, or if not, if it hasn't dropped already. Uh, Genius Print every Sunday is at 12 p.m. We'll see you all next time. Peace, y'all.